Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf, and um, a topic that uh, we hear a lot, especially here at the club, uh, at the Royal Quebec Golf Club. Um, in our indoor academy, we see each other every week and we talk about the happenings on the PGA Tour. And uh, this is going to be a very busy week uh, as far as chatting about slow play. Um, we've seen it rear its head again uh, this weekend. And um, to me, it's just plain to see, um, you know, I put uh, JT on the clock and he's between 30 and 40 seconds, very rarely above that time. Just a couple of times he, he reached a minute. Uh, Adam Scott was between 20 and 30 seconds. And uh, JB was between a minute and 2.30 consistently. Over a minute by far every time he set up for any shot. And to me, it may not only be his, you know, his fault, it's the environment that he's in. Because like Brooks Kepka said a, a couple of weeks ago, he says, you know, nobody is enforcing the rules. And um, to me, you know, with another situation that happened with Matt Kuchar uh, that was really helped along by social media and uh, the court of public opinion is extremely strong these days. And so to me, it's just a matter of, yes, put the shot clock on. It's done wonders for basketball. And so... You know, when you hear JT saying that, hey, you know, I'm over a putt and uh, I'll learn how to deal with these windy, harsh conditions better next time, which means he's going to still do it within the allotted amount of time that he has. Because often, you know, you heard him over the interview, he says, I'm standing over the putt and I feel this wind gust coming along but I had to move anyways. Why? Because if I backed off and started over again, I would have taken too much time. And that's exactly how I feel when I'm over the shot and I'm playing golf with my students or my friends. And because it's important for me to have integrity in the game. We keep talking about how much this game means to us as far as our integrity, in, integrity is concerned. You know, we'll be the first ones to call ourselves if something, you know, happened that nobody else saw. And so I'm really proud of that. And that's something I'd like to see continue within the game. And I think that social media can really help us along. So the shot clock can be, you know, put into place without penalty. You see, you don't really need to penalize the player. So you'll have a shot clock that, you know, the, the, the scorer for each group will have a shot clock and he'll, you know, start the, start the clock once everybody has marked their ball. And example, you know, at the last green, um, Bubba Watson took four putts from the same place that J.B. Holmes was. But J.B. took two minutes and 30 seconds to set up for that putt. And he had the time because, you know, JT and, and Adam Scott had to go and mark their balls further up the green, and he was already at his ball, so, and he was the first to get there. But yet, after they had marked their balls, there was still two minutes and 30 seconds that went by, and he was able to two putt. So he was allowed to take the time required to collect himself. Wow. Now, let, let's examine, you know, what really needs to transpire on a golf shot. And, you know, when you really think about it, what are those 40 or 50 seconds there for? They're there for execution. So by the time you get to your ball, I mean, the read and the, the prep happens on your way to the golf ball. You're already feeling the wind and you're already seeing where that ball is. You have an idea of where you hit it. You know this hole. You've played a few practice rounds. You've played this tournament several times. You have a caddy who's paced things off and has all his yardages, and, and that's what you really pay a caddy for, and that's why the caddies are, are, are there to make some, some decent dollars because they really assist in the way, hey, the green breaks like this. I've rolled a few balls from that position and that sucker is going to break to the right. So 
as you prepare, you walk into your shot, you feel the wind, you see the lie, you know how far it is, you already have a really good idea of what club that you're, you're meant to use for that shot. So, hey, I'm just past the, the 200 yard marker, I just passed that sprinkler head, and that sprinkler head says I'm 25 yards from about where my ball is, which is right at the 150 marker. I know that pin's in front, so it's minus 10. So 140, I'm gonna take you know, my, my gap wedge instead of my pitching wedge. And because I'm downwind and, and I should just land it a little bit past the ball, I'll be able to hold that shot. So I've already planned out my shot and my flight plan. So when I get to the ball, it's, well, there's my intermediate point. There's my flight. Yes, that fits. My ball position, my distance to ball, my grip and club face. Okay, what feel am I putting into that? Yeah, it's about gonna be like that. Yep, that started on the line I wanted. Okay, how do we do? So when it comes to execution, my goal is 25 seconds. If I need to back off, I've got the extra 15 seconds. So you really need to plan out and prepare for your events. So if we have a shot clock, it's just going to force everyone to prepare better. That's it. Nobody's going to get penalized. It's not going to be the end of the world for people. This brain of yours is a highly adaptive tool. And that's what it's there for. So it happened in basketball. Delays of game penalties are there in baseball and hockey to protect the integrity of the game. Our game needs protection right now. Because when JT is standing over his pot and he's saying, oh shoot, I felt that gust of wind, I want to back off. But I feel like I'm ready for this and if I back off, I'm going to take too much time, so off we go. And he said it after the game. He says, you know, and he's talking for himself. He, and I, and I, my hat's off to him, man. You know, he says, I'll be better next time. I'll prepare. I'll know when, when those greens are fast and that wind is cold. I'll know how to deal with that better. And so when Bubba Watson four putts the last hole, and that's, that's a big ding in the, in the wallet right there from where he was, and everybody had trouble with that. So he takes his proper allotted amount of time. And as you approach the green, uh, obviously JB was going to be the first one to putt. And the others had to walk past his ball, up the green, to the back of the green, mark their ball. That's a lot of time. So JB gets his ball first. He, he was first in line to walk up there. And so he gets to his ball, everybody marks, and I start my timer after JT had marked his ball, and it was two minutes and 30 seconds before he had pulled the trigger. And that to me, that's, you know, taking advantage. To me, it's, it's taking away from others for yourself. However, the environment that he's in is very much protecting what he's doing because if somebody's not going to do anything about that, well, then you have the free reins to do it, <laughs> right? Because it's not hitting you anywhere and you can continue to do your livelihood and you don't realize what this is doing to others. JT, you know, had there been a shot clock, do you really think that JB Holmes would have won that tournament? There's the question. So yesterday on Twitter, I, I expressed my agreement with a lot of people who thought that things weren't correct. And, uh, and I, I played my small part in that particular loop. And to me, because I do have a lot of students that look to me for advice and, and, a, and a little wisdom, and, um, and, and we're gonna have conversations with the members this week. I see over 60 people a week in our indoor academy here, and this is gonna be a real hot topic of conversation. So it isn't anyone's fault at the moment because everybody's trying to figure out what they need to do. And in the meantime, we have to have some tournaments. We want some, so, some entertainment, and we really enjoy our game, and we love our game, and we want the best for this game. So 
let's instill a shot clock and then, you know, feel free with the comments below. Uh, let's have some fun with this and please be respectful. Um, you know, we want to be constructive. We don't want to be destructive when it comes to things like that. One of the, one of the things of social media that, that is, you know, get, leaves a real bad taste in the mouth is when somebody gets on a destructive rant and uh, nobody feels good about that. So, you know, we know there's a problem. Now it's time to bring some solutions. And I think that my video here that, you know, this is, this is my contribution to the issue. And there, there's going to be, uh, uh, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of contributors to this particular issue because it touches us all. But to do nothing about it, I think is, is big trouble for us. So, you know, let's get a shot clock going. That's my suggestion. I think it's done wonders for the basketball community. And uh, I think it's, it's really hit uh, a, a nice, um, it's been some great feedback on the European tour on the couple of events that they've had a shot clock on. Now it's just a matter of how are we going to penalize the players who are definitely breaking those rules on a repetitive basis. And in, in all honesty, the PG Tour doesn't have, to, doesn't have to be the judge and jury on that. We'll just take the court of public opinion. And that's my take on it. So enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the conversations. We'll see you, we'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>